Good morning. Good morning. Again. My name is Brooklyn, and I am so excited to be with you this morning. Before I get into it, I want to share some of who I am with you. I come to you from Plymouth Congregational UCC in Fort Collins, where I am the Director of Christian Formation. So I spend a lot of my time thinking about what formation is, how we shape who we are and what we love. And I especially work with children and youth on shaping the future of the church. I'm working on getting ordained into the United Church of Christ, and I recently graduated from ILIF, where I focus on pastoral and spiritual care, especially with womanist and liberationist pastoral theology. But I grew up in more conservative and evangelical Christian spaces in Fort Collins. I have three younger sisters. I have always been a super responsible eldest daughter, a good Christian girl, a nurturer, a caregiver, and a girl who was taught that women couldn't be spiritual leaders because they weren't as strong or as serious as men. And God was a male. So when I invited, when I was invited to come here, and yeah, I do not know why Marta said <laughs> Brooklyn's an expert here. Um, when I was invited to come here and explore the idea of the divine feminine with you through the lens of Mary Magdalene, I had all sorts of feelings about it. Super excited, super thrilled, mostly really nervous. Um, nervous because I am new to preaching and I'm new to ideas of the divine feminine and nervous because I haven't spent much time with Mary Magdalene. So I turned to this famous story of her from the Gospel of John. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. I cry a lot. Just last week, I cried while I was driving to work because I was upset that it was a Tuesday. That's a true story. <laughs> I think crying is powerful and healing and necessary. We know that Jesus cried. And here we have Mary grieving that her beloved Jesus is dead and that his body has been stolen. And she's crying. And she bends over, the weight of her whole world bearing her down. And she looks into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. Maybe that's divine feminine. The crying, the angels, the weight of the world can't keep us from seeing God. Except when Jesus himself comes to talk to her and she doesn't recognize him. And then he asks two of his 300 questions. Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? When Jesus calls her by her name, she recognizes him. And she calls him teacher. And she tries to embrace him. Maybe that's divine feminine. The intimacy the love, the nurturing. So Jesus says to her, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him, she told them that he said these things to her. She went and preached. Preaching really is just announcing the good news. Preaching can sneak up on us. I work with kids and youth, and I promise you, the best sermons I've heard were from their discussions and questions. The Sunday school room and the youth room are just as holy as the pulpit. So here's Mary weeping and preaching. I told you I cry a lot. I talk a lot, too. And I realize there's probably a sexist joke to be made here about women and crying and talking. But now we have this story from the Gospel of Mary. The disciples grieved bitterly, shedding many tears and saying, how are we supposed to go out preaching to the rest of the world 
proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of the Son of Man. If they didn't spare him, then what will become of us? So here's a group of men, and they're grieving, crying, and talking. I wonder if men maybe, probably, need to do some more crying, maybe less talking. (laughs) I'm kidding, but more crying, really. (laughs) I should have warned you about my sense of humor. I'm pretty sarcastic. But in all seriousness, thinking about divine feminine is also an invitation to expand or even deconstruct traditional ideas about masculine patriarchal divinity. Divine feminine is an invitation to transcend the binary. God is both and neither. God, divinity, holy, and sacred is too much for our boxes. And God is big enough for all of our diversity. In my womanist and liberationist training, I learned that no one is free until everyone is free. And as a spiritual caregiver, I want everyone to see the way they reflect and carry the divine within themselves. Then Mary rose up. She embraced them all, kissing them tenderly, and began to speak to her brothers and sisters. Through him, we too can become fully human. Maybe that's divine feminine. The vulnerability, the full humanity, connection. The gentle modeling of how to move forward as preachers of the good news of Jesus the Christ. Saying these things, Mary turned their hearts inward toward the good, and they began to wrestle with the meaning of the Savior's words and to discuss his sayings. Mary made them a bunch of weeping preachers, too. They wept, they found the good, and they wrestled within themselves and in community with each other. And we know they went forward to change their world. I wonder what role the divine feminine played in shaping who they were and how they followed Jesus. I read a book by Anna Carter Florence, a Presbyterian minister and professor of preaching at Columbia Theological Seminary. About Mary, she wrote, Mary never meant to start preaching. She'd gone to the tomb to weep, and that was it. It doesn't sound like anything a preacher would do to prepare a sermon, but after reading this story, maybe we should think about it. A preacher might just start by crying. Go to the tomb of what the empire has murdered and lament. At this point, I would like to invite us to go to the tomb. And to do that, I'm borrowing a guided meditation written by Sue Pickering, an Anglican priest and spiritual director. In preparation for this guided meditation, you're invited to get into a comfortable position, to take some slow, easy breaths, and when you are ready, if you would like to, close your eyes. Remember that you don't need to struggle to make something happen. Just let images form if they will, or notice an inner impression instead. Feel free at any time during the process to stop if you do not feel comfortable going on. Before we begin, we pray. God who leads us from darkness into light, from bondage into freedom, send your Holy Spirit to surround, protect, and guide us as we enter into the mystery of your work of grace in our lives. Amen. So let's begin. Take a moment to settle into silence and to allow your mind to become still. If distractions come, acknowledge them, but set them on the back burner for the time being so you can pay attention to the present work of the spirit in your life. I invite you to imagine a cave. 
It could be one you have visited or one that you've heard of. But this cave is special to you and you alone. Take some time to allow that cave to take shape for you. And you realize that the entrance to the cave is blocked by a large stone, keeping you from seeing what's inside. You become aware that this cave holds something which God wants to bring to life. Perhaps the cave holds a dead talent which needs to see the light of day. Or maybe there's a new area of ministry or service which scares you to death and which you have thrust into the dark recesses of your mind. Maybe there's something about yourself which you thought was dead and buried, but which God wants to heal. Perhaps the cave holds all sorts of new possibilities. As you become aware of the cave, you also become aware that Jesus is standing outside with you. How do you feel as you realize you are not alone? Jesus looks at you, and there is a measurable love in his eyes as he says, My beloved, roll away the stone. You look at the stone, then at Jesus, then back to the stone. You take a step towards it. How do you feel? What's going through your mind? You look at Jesus again as if you hope he will remove the stone for you, but he remains loving you from a distance, knowing you must make this move for yourself. If you're afraid of approaching the cave, turn and talk to Jesus about your fear. Then continue with the process. Otherwise, just stop at this point and take your feelings or questions to some reflection time this afternoon. So, you begin to roll the stone away. You're surprised how smoothly it slides away to reveal the entrance. You step back and wait with Jesus beside you to see what comes forth. Once you have seen what emerges and have begun to explore it, you might like to talk to Jesus about what has happened. Together, consider what it might mean for you whether it's an invitation somewhere, what might be the next step? I invite you, when you are ready, to come back, open your eyes. I participated in this meditation just a few days ago as part of a spiritual retreat, and I did not want to touch that stone. I am too tired. I am not strong enough. And maybe whatever is in there is supposed to stay in there. But then I felt that nothing is supposed to stay hidden. Maybe that's divine feminine, truth-telling, courage, weeping, preaching, being fully human, things Jesus never shied away from, things we see in Mary. Anna Carter Florence wraps up her thoughts on Mary by saying this, maybe preaching whatever it is, starts with Mary. Maybe she's the one we should be looking for. After all, she was Jesus' first choice to preach the Easter sermon. Today, I'm here with you, wrestling with the idea of divine feminine, practicing vulnerability, showing you that I weep and I preach And as followers of Jesus, I hope we might find our fully human, fully alive selves when we look into the tomb. Amen. Now, I invite you at this time.
to turn towards each other and in groups of two or three, take a couple of minutes to share with each other your responses to the following questions. Share a story about weeping, either a time you wept or a time you were moved by someone else's tears. Then reflect on how does our weeping or our preaching connect us to our humanity. And bringing us back together. Coming on back. I love when we get this going. I will say Nicole will be very happy that she's not the only one who cries up in the pulpit. She often says, I didn't tell Brooklyn this, she often says that she has the gift of tears. So um, beautiful way. And um, I don't know about you, but does everyone understand how come Marta suggested Brooklyn come and preach about the divine feminine and Mary Magdalene? I love that. The thing I didn't say, I reached out to Marta because um, she has this really great podcast called Jesus Has Left the Building. If you've not, if you're a podcaster, love to listen to them. She's really great. And she's done a lot of work on Divine Feminine. And um, I thought, who can I help find some speakers but Marta Fiore? And I knew she wouldn't be available because she works every Sunday. But um, I knew she would know who to point us to. So what a gift. Brooklyn, thank you so much, um, and I hope your conversation, however it um, went, I hope it continues during fellowship time, and I hope you tell Brooklyn all about what you are taking away today. So thank you for participating in such a beautiful reflection. And so let us take some time for some silence, and Philip will ring us back in in about a minute. So let's take some time to reflect on what you heard and what you received. Greetings to you wherever you are watching this. For those of you whom I have yet to meet in person, I'm Reverend Nicola Marsh, pastor here at Community UCC. And we see that people like you are watching our live stream each week. And because of this, we are excited to be embarking upon an experiment. And we need you. If you are engaging with us regularly, finding meaning in what we are about, we would like to extend a special invitation for you to be among the first CUCC digital disciples. For signing up for just $10 a month, you will receive a t-shirt with the new CUCC logo. And we are also exploring the idea of offering other content to those of you who are part of this new and growing area of digital ministry. Sign up to support us in this new way at cuccboulder.org backslash support by clicking on the yellow donate tab and noting you are a digital disciple in the instructions. Or as always, we welcome an old fashioned check mailed to us at CUCC PO Box 3646, Boulder, Colorado 80307. Thank you for being and building beloved community with us. And thank you for your gift, whatever it might be. <laughs>